Welcome back to Colorado and Company. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us here on Veterans Day. I'm Denise Plant. You know, we have so many wonderful people here on Colorado and Company that we like to introduce you to, including Freedom Service Dogs of America. They help fund the rescue, care, and training of man's best friend for veterans. In fact, next month's canines ready to serve will be graduating from training. Here with more is CEO Michelle Ostrander and veteran Ryan Kelly, along with his service dog, Mila. Welcome back to the show. Good to see you again. Good to see you. So, Michelle, Freedom Service Dogs is officially in a new building. Congratulations. Yay, we are. Yes. Where's the location? So we are at 7193 South Dillon Court in Englewood, about a, two blocks from the Denver Broncos training studio or training field. Wow, and I bet yeah. you have a lot of hopes for the future with that. We do. It is more than double the size we've had in the past. So we, our goal is to bring in more dogs so that we can train more dogs and serve more clients. Right now our wait list is 18 months to two years to get a service dog, and that's just way too long right. to wait when you need a service dog. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Talk about what service dogs do for veterans. They do a variety of things. So many of our veterans deal with post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, uh, mobility issues. So our dogs can help them, and, and Ryan can tell us much more, but um, help them get back out in public, rejoin with their family, with the community, really have, you know, get right. out of the house and, and help them. Gives them really, that support, that emotional yes. connection. And be that battle buddy out in public. Oh yeah, that's a great way to put it. I've never thought of that. Where do you find the dogs and how do you train them? So many programs use breeding programs and we don't. We believe that shelter dogs can be amazing service dogs. So, so we use rescue dogs and shelter dogs um, and that's Nilla is one of those. Yeah. Um, and we go to shelters in Colorado, New Mexico, Wyoming, bring them in and we train them and they become amazing service dogs. Well, Mr. Ryan, first off, thank you very much for serving our country. Well, thank you, it was my honor to serve. What military branch and when and where did you serve? I was in the National Guard and I served in Iraq as a helicopter, a Black Hawk pilot and a company commander in uh, 0405. And talk about why it's important for you to have a service dog. What have you been experiencing? Well, when I got back from Iraq, I came home with a pretty good shake of uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, but uh, one of the problems with that particular ailment is that you're unwilling to admit it. Uh, especially if you don't have a physical wound because you're thinking the guys who are more injured than I am, you know, if they're missing an arm or a leg or uh, have TBI or some sort of phys physical manifestation of the wound, they need treatment more than, than I would. So um, I started looking around and, uh, for help and... Um, you finally reached out to service veterans dogs? Yeah. You know, uh, my wife, <clears throat> God bless her, Love you, babe. <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> she heard of Freedom Service Dogs, and uh, I interviewed for the dog and uh, was fortunate enough to be selected and then paired with Nilla. And, and what has Nilla done for you? Nilla has done a lot, <laughs> and more than I thought she ever would, frankly. I used to get up in the middle of the night and check the doors and the windows and the locks, and uh, if I heard any kind of noise. Of or, course. But then, now I'll just look at Nilla, and if she's like this, as uh, she is here right now, then I'm like, well, I guess nobody's trying to break in the house yeah, or what have you, so okay. I can go back to sleep. Or I can totally understand what you're saying. Like when you come back, you were kind of embarrassed. You didn't want to. You had to hold that strong face because you have to be strong in what you're doing, protecting our country, mm -hmm. even though it's so debilitating. And then coming home and constantly watching your back like that, you need somebody mm -hmm. out there helping and protecting you. What is it like? to finally be paired to a service dog, but then also the process of waiting and finding that dog that's gonna be perfect for you. The process of waiting is just waiting and frankly, uh, it's, uh, you kind of forget about it. You're like, oh yeah, I'm waiting for a dog and hopefully it'll come and mm -hmm. it'll be a dog. And then uh, they match you and <clears throat> it's a good match. And then it's just like uh, being paired with somebody, in my case, from the Army or uh, some of the camaraderie that you experience, that you and the dog kind of bind, and then you become friends, and then you become closer friends, and then you learn to count on each other. And uh, Like you did in the military. Absolutely, right? yeah. Tell me about the graduation that's happening on December 10th. So open to the public, come see what we do. Um, it is going to be at CU South Campus in Parker, two, two o'clock to four o'clock. And we have our graduating dogs, our veterans, and our other clients. So come see the work that we do. It's wonderful, and thank you so much. Again, 
thank you for serving our country. And I'm so happy that you're blessed with Nilla and you reached out and now you have a buddy forever in life. That's wonderful. Thank, thank you. you again. Again, Freedom Service Dogs at the winter graduation is Saturday, December 10th at CU South Denver's Great Hall from 2 to 4 p.m. Learn more about these amazing animals. Please visit this website. Go to freedomservicedogs.org or you can call 303-922-6231. Please reach out.